we reject outright the apostate-driven lies that Jehovah's Organization is permissive toward pedophiles. And it's process and you get reinstated. He knew that even when you're disfellowshipped, you can show up at the Kingdom Hall meetings and prove that you're trying to get back in, that you're sorry, that you're repentant. At one point... Debbie's dad was the presiding elder when she was kicked out of the religion, and he knew he could probably never talk to her again. The decision to disfellowship. And so he said, where do they keep the records? And I said, there's a file cabinet in the elders' room. They're always there. He said, I just got a phone call from someone who chose to remain anonymous and said, serve the warrant again. Tonight, 76-year-old Ronald Lawrence faces 19 counts of lewd acts that date back more than 30 years. So the policeman says to me, wait, go back to that. Let's go back to the abuse, if you don't mind. Can I get a statement from you regarding that? Brent McAllister set out to get a subpoena to get those records. Predators depend on secrecy. They depend on silence. They depend on the silence of their victims. When Debbie's dad, even after knowing this guy is abusing children. Doesn't call the cops. Pursue it. The DA was convinced that we had solid evidence to send Ronnie to prison. And the more that we've learned about the way in which children experience sex abuse, we now know that the average disclosure age for child sex abuse is 52. You're asking the wrong guy. In fact, it'd be best if you go ahead and leave. Get off the property. Okay, I'll leave your property. Right. The introduction when Ronnie came was the Watch Towers policy when a person who's been accused of sexual abuse switches congregations. Those elders, right? Yeah. But even when I offered these elders hard evidence that the Watch Tower shields child abusers from the authorities, they still wouldn't consider it. They didn't want to know about it. They said they wouldn't believe it. Family members. Jehovah's Witnesses is a high control group and that threat of disfellowshipping. The text messages. The one time my mother answered her phone and I said, where's my child? She said to me, I don't answer to you, I answer to the elders. I received a phone call out of the blue. This detective asked me if I would be willing to come to McAllister to meet with him and answer. The cops found a ton of information on Debbie's case. I mean, there were letters over periods of months between the congregation and the watchtower. So they're writing watchtower to inform them of a situation where a single individual, another victim that would come out later, came forward about sexual abuse by Ronnie. Ronnie Lawrence. Based on that evidence, they're able to charge him with 19 counts of child abuse. Who is on whose side? We walked past Ronnie Lawrence and his wife, and directly behind them sat Debbie's mother and father. A witness will always choose to support the witness. Ronnie was in good standing at that time, had been reinstated. They've chosen to sit behind this pedophile as moral support. I've always had the fear that Ronnie Lawrence would continue to abuse children. You familiar with Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, he's not here anymore, just congregation. Right, he's up in Wilburton, I think. Are you an elder here? What do you ask? In congregation. I have grandchildren in the Wilburton congregation. The elders are aware that he's a child molester, that Ronnie will continue to abuse children. Can't make any comments. The concern is just that are people really protected in a kingdom hall from child abuse? I, I can assure you they are. I, I feel safe with my kids here. You do. Only because freedom, to me, would look more like emotional and mental freedom, and I don't have that from the organization yet. Since I had been disfellowshipped, there has been no interaction with my mother. I think I'm beyond revenge. But there has to be some accountability. There needs to be change. There needs to be reform. Speed. We'll be filing a 
lawsuit on behalf of victims of child molestation and abuse in the Jehovah's Witness Church. They're going to open a window in New York where the statute of limitations are lifted for a year and historical child abuse cases can be used as the basis of lawsuits against these. It burns me up that people who've been through what you've been through, and there are a lot of people, um, are blaming themselves for something that's not their fault in that country. The Child Abuse Royal Commission has exposed what might be the worst cultural sexual abuse and cover-up within a church that we've ever seen. That church is the Jehovah's Witnesses. Population Jehovah's Witnesses. So the question becomes, what's America doing? Get covered up. And somehow, you know, no matter how many of these abuse stories I listen to, I learn something different every single time. My life has been changed every day by what Josh Caldwell did to me, along with a female co-abuser who was also my sister-in-law. Thank you for hearing the truth. And that is where I met Joshua Caldwell. Joshua Caldwell was a Jehovah's Witness. He had moved to our Kingdom Hall around that time. We get to a stop sign. Every time he would see a light in the distance, if it was green, he would slow up until it would turn red. And every time we would stop, Jen and I would have to kiss each other and do a little like makeout scene for him. They were dirty and abandoned. I knew that if they yelled, nobody would hear me anyway. I didn't understand what was happening. I was scared. Time bomb. Somebody has to try a case against the Watchtower where these documents are going to be front and center. That's going to blow the lid off of these guys.